In this lesson, we're going to focus on how to handle strings in JavaScript, and we'll mainly be looking at some of the functions that are available that are built in with JavaScript that enable you to transform the strings or to get certain information about them. So whilst we haven't covered what a function is within this course, if you just think of the code that I'm about to show you as things that are built into JavaScript that are available on any strings that you're working with, then hopefully that should be enough information for now to get going with these functions. So the first thing that you might want to know about a string is how long it is. And we can actually do that by just typing dot length onto the end of a string. And you can see it returns with a number, which represents how many characters are in that string. So this is really common to find out the length of a string. You can find out if the string is empty, it will obviously return zero if there's nothing in it. So it's another way of checking the data that's stored in your variables. And you can choose to do different things in your program depending on the result. So the next thing you might want to know about a string is what character is at a certain position. So you might have a need to find out what the third character of the string actually is. And we can do that by using this function called char at. And if I want to find out the third character of the string, which obviously is E, I actually need to pass in the number of two because the string is zero indexed, which basically means that the first character in the string is at position zero. So this might seem a bit weird if you've never done any programming before, but trust me, you'll find zero based indexes all over the place. So you just need to get into the habit of subtracting one from the actual position in the string that you want to access. Another thing you might want to find out about a string is does it start with a particular sequence of characters? And you can do that with the starts with function. And starts with will actually give you a true or false value back depending on whether or not the string in question actually starts with those characters. So here we get one of those boolean values that we talked about in a previous lesson. So if I was to change this to something else I'd obviously get a false value back and it is also case sensitive as well. So for example, the with a lowercase t is not equivalent to uppercase the. And of course, there's a corresponding ends with function. Which does exactly the same thing as starts with, but obviously checks at the end of the string. So another common task that you'll need to do on strings is replace part of it. So uh, we can actually identify part of the string by specifying a sequence of characters and then telling JavaScript what we want to replace that with. And the function we need to call is actually called replace. So if we wanted to replace the word quick in our string, we simply pass in one value of quick and then we put in the text that we want to replace the original. So you can do some very complex replacements uh, using something called regular expressions, but we're not going to dive into that now because that's quite a complex subject on its own, as long as you know that there is a function called replace that allows you to replace text in a string. So when you think about working with strings, uh, you might think about extracting part of a string or removing part of that string. And that is quite a common task to carve up a string into different parts. And the function we can use to do that is called slice. So slice needs to have two numbers for it to work. And the first one is where we want to start in the string. And don't forget those strings are zero indexed. So if we start off with a zero, and then the second uh, number we pass in is where we want the string to finish slicing. So if we wanted the first three characters, we would pass in the number three. And as you can see, that's got the first three characters from the string. And now we have the in our console. Okay, so we said before that the starts with and indeed the ends with function are case sensitive, so we need to be careful about uh, putting in capital letters in there. So one common technique is to call a function on a string to make it all either uppercase or lowercase. And that way you don't need to worry about case sensitivity when you're testing against other strings. So you can see the functions are two uppercase and two lowercase, and they will make sure that the string is all set to the respective case. So one final function that you can call on a string is the repeat function. And as the name suggests, it just repeats that string the number of times that you pass inside the parentheses. So there are quite a lot of other string functions that are available in JavaScript. These are just some of the key ones you'll need to get started with some basic problem solving. I'll provide a link with the details of all of the string functions that are available. But for now, in your console, if you practice some of these functions, so that you get confident in using them and understand what each one does. It'll get you ready for when you need to start writing some full JavaScript code.